Hello and welcome. I am Joe Bartlett, and this is the Blue Creek Outdoors Bible Study. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Blue Creek Outdoors Bible Study. Today, we are going to be finishing the book of Leviticus. We have a handful of chapters left, and uh, this has been a little bit of a tough one to get through, but it's like so, most of these Old Testament books, they just have pieces of them that are just a struggle to get through, but then they have these little gems of just really important things that are uh, that make the read worth it, and this second half of Leviticus is no exception. And so we're going to get right into it, and we're going to start off with chapters uh, 16 through 18. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, who died when they approached the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Tell your brother Aaron not to come whenever he chooses into the most holy place behind the curtain in front of the atonement cover on the ark, or else he will die, because I will appear in the cloud over the atonement cover. This is how Aaron is to enter the sanctuary area, with a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He is to put on the sacred linen tunic with uh, with linen garments undergarments next to his body. He is to tie the linen sash around him and put on the linen turban. These are sacred garments, so he must bathe himself with water before he puts them on. From the Israelite community, he is to take two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aaron is to offer the bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for his, himself and his household. Then he is to take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He is to cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Aaron shall bring the goat whose lot fails or falls to the Lord and sacrifice it for a sin offering. But the goat chosen by Lot as the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to be used for making atonement by sending it into the desert as a scapegoat. Aaron shall bring the bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for himself and his household, and he is to slaughter the bull for his own sin offering. He is to take a censer full of burning coals from the altar before the Lord and two handfuls of finely ground fragrant incense and take them behind the curtain. He is to put the incense on the fire before the Lord, and the smoke of the incense will conceal the atonement cover above the testimony so that he will not die. He is to take some of the bull's blood and with, its, with his finger sprinkle it on the front of the atonement cover. Then he shall sprinkle some of it with his finger seven times before the atonement cover. He shall then slaughter the goat for the sin offering for the people and take its blood behind the curtain and do with it as he did with the bull's blood. He shall sprinkle it on the atonement cover and in front of it. In this way he will make atonement for the most holy place because of the uncleanliness and rebellion of the Israelites. Whatever their sins have been, he is to do the same for the tent of meeting, which is among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. No one is to be in the tent of meeting from the time Aaron goes in to make atonement in the most holy place until he comes out, having made atonement for himself, his household, and the whole community of Israel. Then he shall come out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it. He shall take some of the bull's blood and some of the goat's blood and sprinkle it on all the horns of the altar. He shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times to cleanse it and to consecrate it from the uncleanliness of the Israelites. When Aaron has finished making the atonement for the most holy place, the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall bring forward the live goat. He is to lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the desert in the care of a man appointed for the task. The goat will carry on itself all of their sins to a solitary place, and the man shall release it in the desert. Then Aaron is to go into the tent of meeting and take off the linen garments he put on before he entered the most holy place, and he is to leave them there. He shall bathe himself with water in a holy place and put on his regular garments. Then he shall come out and sacrifice the burnt offering for himself and the burnt offering for the people to make atonement for himself and for the people. He shall also bring the fat of the sin offering on the altar. The man who releases the goat as a scapegoat must wash his clothes and bathe himself with water. Afterwards, he may come into the camp. The bull and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought into the most holy place to make atonement, must be taken outside the camp. Their hides, flesh, and offal are to be burned up. The man who burns them must wash his clothes and bathe himself with water. Afterwards, he may come into the camp. This is to be a lasting ordinance on you. On the tenth day of the seventh month, you must deny yourselves and not do any work, whether native-born or any or an alien living among you, because on this day atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. Then, before the Lord, you will be clean for all your sins. It is a Sabbath of rest, and you must deny yourselves. It is a lasting ordinance. The priest who is anointed and ordained to succeed his father as high priest is to make atonement. 
He is to put on the sacred linen garments and make atonement for the most holy place, for the tent of meeting and the altar, and for the priests and all the people of the community. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. Atonement is to be made once a year for all the sins of the Israelites. And it was done as the Lord commanded Moses. Chapter 17 The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. Any Israelite who sacrifices an ox, a lamb, or a goat in the camp or outside of it, instead of bringing it into the to the chit, excuse me, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to present it as an offering to the Lord in in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, that man shall be considered guilty of bloodshed. He has shed blood and must be cut off from his people. This is so the Israelites will bring to the Lord and the, the sacrifices they are now making in the open fields. They must bring them to the priest, that is, to the Lord, at the entrance of the tent of meeting and sacrifice them as fellowship offerings. The priest is to sprinkle the blood against the altar of the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting and burn the fat as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. They must no longer offer any sacrifices to the goat idols to whom they prostitute themselves. This is to be a lasting ordinance for them and for the generations to come. Say to them, Any Israelite or any alien living among them who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting to sacrifice it to the Lord, that man must be cut off from his people. Any Israelite or alien living among them who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and will cut him off from his people. For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. altar excuse me. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Therefore, I say to the Israelites, none of you may eat blood, nor may, any, nor may an alien living among you eat blood. Any Israelite or any alien living among you who hunts any animal or bird that may be eaten must drain out the blood and cover it with earth, because the life of every creature is its blood. This is why I have said to the Israelites, you must not eat the blood of any creature, because the life of every creature is in its blood. Anyone who cuts it, eats it must be cut off. Anyone, whether native-born or alien, who eats anything found dead or torn by wild animals must wash his clothes and bathe with water, and he will be ceremonially unclean till evening. Then he will be clean. If he does not wash his clothes and bathe himself, he will be held responsible. Chapter 18 The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You must not do as they do in Egypt, where you used to live, and you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and laws, for the man who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. No one is to approach any close close relative to have sexual relations. I am the Lord. Do not dishonor your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your father's wife. That would dishonor your father. Do not have sexual relations with your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born in the same home or elsewhere. Do not have sexual relations relations with your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter that would dishonor you. Do not have sexual relations with the daughter of your father's wife, born to your father, she is your sister. Do not have sexual relations with your father's sister, she is your close relative. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, because she is your mother's close relative. Do not dishonor your father's brother by approaching his wife to have sexual relations. She is your aunt. Do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. That would dishonor your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a man, or excuse me, both a woman and her daughter. Do not have sexual relations with either her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. They are her close, close relatives. That is wickedness. Do not take your wife's sister as a rival wife and have sexual relations with her while your wife is living. Do not approach a woman to have sexual relations during the uncleanliness of her monthly period. Do not have sexual relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. Do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Moloch, for you must not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. Do not have sexual relations with an animal and defile yourself with it. A woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it. That is a perversion. Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways because this is how the nations that I am going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled, so I punished it for its sin and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native born and the aliens living among you must not do any of these detestable things. For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. 
And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. Everyone who does any of these detestable things, such persons must be cut off from their people. Keep my requirements and do not follow any of the detestable customs that were practiced before you came and do not defile yourselves with them. I am the Lord your God. All right, in this section we see the first the first chunk of reading that we did. It had the instructions for the Day of Atonement that comes in the fall, which is known as Yom Kippur. Um, and it's the only day when the priest can enter the most holy place in the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, to atone for the people of Israel. And it has very specific instructions for what Aaron is to wear when he does that and how he is to go about it. And even it kind of interesting thing here that I, one of my, I guess, uh, I don't know if I say favorite or one of my, in my opinion, one of the most profound themes throughout the Bible are these sections where it talks about being in the presence of God. And it, it shows us here that Aaron has to use incense to um, burn and create smoke to cloud the inside of the most holy place because he will die if he sees the Lord in his full glory. We, I mean, I, I, I can't comprehend that. Um, it's, it's a, it's, it's a thing that has always been really fascinating to me that if we were to stand in the presence of God in his full glory, we would, we will die. We, we are not like our, I don't know how you die. Like, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what about it kills you, but you, your body can't, cannot exist in the presence of the Lord in his full glory in, in the way in our, in the, our form here on this earth. Um, so just kind of a fun fact there that I've, and it, it mentions that a little bit in a couple different places throughout the Bible. And it just is something to me that I've always thought was fascinating, but, um, and on that day, the. Um, he is to make atonement for himself and his family and then also for the people. And for the people, it's two goats, one for the Lord and one to be sent away. And the the one goes pretty much according to the how many times we've talked about how to make sacrifices. It pretty much just goes like that. But the other one um, is kind of a it's kind of a foreshadow of what Christ eventually does for people um, with him with his own son. The goat is symbolizing sending the sins of the community out into away from them, into the wilderness, taking them away. The goat is the scapegoat, and it bears all the sins of the people. So, um, and it's an important job. Somebody takes that goat away, and, and, it, and it manifests all of the sins, leaving them, which is, which is uh, you know, that's a pretty cool thing that God is doing for them right there. Another thing is that God makes it very clear that blood is not to be consumed. And he, and he, makes that clear by saying that blood has one purpose and that is to atone for sins. So a lot of the times, you know, I've had people ask me like, why did Jesus even have to die? Like, why can't God just like wipe the slate clean or whatever? And it's because he makes it clear here, sins require blood. It has to be atoned for with blood. And the Israelites at this point in time are lucky enough that he's letting them do that with animals. But and then the second, or the third chunk of this reading is that he addresses sexual relations. And for the first time in the Bible, he condemns incest. And he condemns adultery, homosexuality, and bestiality. And he makes the point that these are outside of the order that he has created. Um, I mean, obviously, he created us anatomically um, the way that he wanted us to be and the way that he wants us to reproduce and move forward as a species. And those things fall outside of that. They don't serve the purpose of, uh, what I would say is this, they don't serve God's purpose. And I know that this is like a hot tub, hot button topic today. Um, and, you know, I don't think in any way, shape, or form it says that people are to be condemned and ridic- you know, and they're, oh my gosh, you're going to hell for living a certain way. No, no part of the Bible says that. Um, and, and you know, it also, just from everything that I've seen in the Bible here, um, it uh, even having desires and having thoughts like that, uh, that's not condemnable. Like, that's like everybody has those. Like, uh, like some dudes just, uh, you look at other women other than your spouse with lust, or you covet your neighbor's stuff, or you, you I mean, it's, the, the, the thoughts, the, the, the desires and thoughts that we have in our human hearts, um, you know, that's not what's going to get you separated from God. Um, but it is it is acting them out and moving forward on the things that do not serve God's purpose. And he makes it pretty clear here that those things are outside of his purpose 
Um, they don't serve him. And when he, he goes back into the, he says that all of the people around you, the Canaanites, the Egyptians that had you uh, under their rule, they were doing all of these things. And the land that's in itself vomited them out. So do not do those things because you've seen what happens to your enemies. I'm going to continue to make it happen to your enemies. You are set apart by me. And this is how we're going to move forward. So that's, uh, I, you know, at this point in the Bible, I'm just pumped that at this point he has uh, condemned incest because it seems that it has, at this point in time, it served its purpose and is no longer allowed, which, you know, in today's day and age with our, uh, our way of thinking and the worldview that we have right now, um, however many thousands of years later, um, you know, obviously I think, um, it's just, uh, just good. I'm glad, I'm glad that's not a thing anymore. <laughs> Thanks God. Appreciate it. We're going to move forward with chapters, uh, 19 through 21. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy because I, the Lord, your God am holy. Each of you must respect his mother and father. You must obey, observe my Sabbaths. I am the Lord, your God. Do not turn to idols or make gods of cast metals for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a fellowship offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It shall be eaten on the day you sacrifice it or on the next day. Anything left over until the third day must be bur excuse me, burned up. If it is eaten on the third day, it is impure and will not be accepted. Whoever eats it will be held responsible because he has desecrated what is holy to the Lord. That person must be cut off from his people. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap the very e to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud your neighbor or rob him. Do not hold back the wages of a hired man overnight. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so that you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Keep my decrees. Do not mate with kinds with different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. If a man sleeps with a woman who is a slave girl, promised to another man, but who has not been ransomed or given her freedom, there must be due punishment. Yet they are not to be put to death because she has not been freed. The man, however, must bring a ram to the entrance to the tent of meeting for a guilt offering to the Lord. With the ram of the guilt offering, the priest is to make atonement for him before the Lord for the sin he has committed, and his sin will be forgiven. When you enter the land and plant any kind of fruit tree, regard its fruit as forbidden. For three years you are to consider it forbidden, it must not be eaten. In the fourth year all its fruit will be holy, and an offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year you may eat its fruit, but this way your harvest will be increased. I am the Lord your God. Do not meet, eat, do not eat meat with any of the blood still in it. Do not practice divination or sorcery. Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will turn, into, turn to prostitution and will be filled with wickedness. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists for you'll be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Rise in the presence of the aged, show respect for the elderly, and revere your God. I am the Lord. When an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. Love him as yourself, for you were aliens in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Use honest scales and honest weights at an honest ephah and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Keep to all my decrees and all my laws, and follow them. I am the Lord. Chapter 20. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Any Israelite or any alien living in Israel who gives any of his children to Moloch must be put to death. The people of the community are to stone him. I will set my face against that man, and I will cut him off from his people. For by giving his children to Moloch, he has defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. 
If the people of the community close their eyes when that man gives one of his children to Moloch and they fail to put him to death, I will set my face against that man and his family and will cut off from their people both him and all who follow him in prostituting themselves to Moloch. I will set my face against the person who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute himself by following them, and I will cut him off from his people. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. If anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother, and his blood will be on his own head. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. If a man sleeps with his father's wife, he has dishonored his father. Both the man and the woman must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man keeps, or excuse me, if a man sleeps with his daughter-in-law, both of them must be put to death. What they have done is a perversion. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries both a woman and her mother, it is wicked. But he and they must be burned in the fire, so that no wickedness will be among you. If a man has sexual relations with an animal, he must be put to death, and you must kill the animal. If a woman approaches an animal to have sexual relations with it, kill both the woman and the animal. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of either his father or his mother, and they have sexual relations, it is a, it, excuse me, it is a disgrace. They must be cut off before the eyes of their people. He has dishonored his sister and will be held responsible. If a man lies with a woman during a monthly period and has sexual relations with her, he has exposed the source of her flow, and she has also uncovered it. Both of them must be cut off from the people. Do not have sexual relations with, their, with the sister of either your mother or your father, for that would dishonor a close relative. Both, both of you would be held responsible. If a man sleeps with his aunt, he has dishonored his uncle. They will be held responsible. They will die childless. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has dishonored his brother. They will be childless. Keep all my decrees and laws and follow them, so that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. You must not live according to the customs of the nations I am going to drive out before you, because they did all these things, I abhorred them. But I said to you, you will possess their land, and I will give it to you as inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has set you apart from the nations. You must therefore make a distinction between clean and unclean animals, and between uh, unclean and clean birds. Do not defile yourselves by any animal or bird or anything that moves along the ground, for those which I have set apart as unclean for you. You are to be holy to me, because I, the Lord, am holy, and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. A man or woman who is a, a medium or spiritist amongst you must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. Chapter 21. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, A priest must not must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of this people who die, except for a close relative, such as his father or mother, his son or daughter, his brother, or an unmarried sister who is dependent on him since she has no husband. For her, he may make himself unclean. He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage, and so defile himself. Priests must not shave their heads or shave off the head edges of their beards or cut their bodies. They must be holy to the God and must not profane the name of their God, because they present the offering made to the Lord by fire, the food of their God, the food of their God they are to be holy. They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husbands, because priests are holy to their God. Regard them as holy because they offer up the food of your God. Consider them holy because I the Lord am holy, I who make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. The high priest, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes. He must not enter a place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean even for his father or mother, nor leave the sanctuary of his God or desecrate it because he has been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God. I am the Lord. The woman he marries must be a virgin. He must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people. So he will not defile his offspring among his people. I am the Lord who makes him holy. The Lord said to Moses, I say to Aaron, For the generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. No man who has any defect may come near. 
no man who is blind or lame, disfigured or deformed, no man with a crippled foot or hand, or who is hunchbacked and dwarfed, or who has any eye defect, or who has festering or running sores or damaged testicles. No descendant of Aaron the priest who has any defect is to come near to present the offerings made to the Lord by fire. He has a defect. He must not come near to offer the food of his God. He may eat the most holy food of his God as well as the holy food, yet because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar and so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So Moses told this to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites. So in this section, we see that God kind of reiterates the Ten Commandments, kind of reminds them a little bit. Um, We got to remember, too, that in this time period that uh, the Israelites are a religious group, but they're also operating as a nation state that is a little bit homeless at the moment. But So he gives them their religious laws because they're a religious group that they have to follow for him. But then he's also given them just kind of some like civic laws as well, just to amongst each other to follow them. Um, and now amongst the religious laws, he specifically mentions people that are offering their children to Moloch, which is a Canaanite God that was of child, that, that, uh, um, the God of child sacrifice essentially. And that's what other nations were doing was they were sacrificing children to this. God's pretty straightforward. It says, if you do this, I'm going to kill you. You're going to die. That's, I will set my face against that man. So Pretty, pretty straightforward with that one. He also gives, you know, laws. The, so the civic laws about the community and the religious laws to how to live honorably for God. And he repeats a lot of stuff. And uh, number one, I think he repeats it because it's important. He wants to tell the importance. But then he also, we also remember, we're only in um, technically the third book of the Bible, but fourth since we've also read Job. And we've just seen how many uh, times the Israelites just forget or just blatantly don't care or disregard what God says. So he repeats himself time and time again, kind of like you do with small children. Um, and one thing, just this was kind of a brief overview of this little section, but one thing that I uh, also saw here was that God provides for the poor through the surplus of the rich. Um he tells them, like, don't harvest your fields fully. Um, don't be greedy. Don't go, you know, don't, when you harvest it, don't pick up every single little thing. Like, don't go back over it to make sure you didn't miss anything. If you missed anything, that's going to be enough to provide for those who don't have much. Um, kind of an interesting thing that I that I noticed there. But that being said, we're going to read chapters 22 and 23. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons to treat with respect the sacred offerings. The Israelites consecrate to me, so they will not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Say to them, for the generations to come, if any of your descendants is ceremonially unclean and yet comes near the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate to the Lord, that person must be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. If a descendant of Aaron has an infectious skin disease or a bodily discharge, he may not eat the sacred offerings until he is cleansed. He will also be unclean if he touches something defiled by a corpse or by anyone who has an emission of semen. Or if he touches any crawling thing that makes him unclean, or any person who makes him unclean, whatever the uncleanness may be, the one who touches any such thing will be unclean till evening. He must not eat any of the sacred offerings unless he has bathed himself with water. When the sun goes down, he will be clean, and after that he may eat the sacred offerings, for they are his food. He must not eat anything found dead or torn by wild animals, and so become unclean through it. I am the Lord. The priests are to keep my requirements so that they do not become guilty and die for treating them with my con- with contempt. I am the Lord who makes them holy. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offering, nor may the guest of a priest or his hired worker eat it. But if a priest buys a slave with money, or if a slave is born in his household, that slave may eat his food. If a priest's daughter marries anyone other than a priest, she may not eat of the sacred contributions. But if a priest's daughter becomes a widow or is divorced, yet has no children, and she returns to live in her father's house as in her youth, she may eat of her father's food. No unauthorized person, however, may eat of it. If anyone eats a sacred offering by mistake, he must make restitution for the, to the priest for the offering and add a fifth of the value to it. The priest must not desecrate the sacred offerings the Israelites present to the Lord by allowing them to eat the sacred offerings and so bring upon them guilt requiring payment. I am the Lord who makes them holy. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, If any of you, either an Israelite or an alien living in Israel, presents a gift for a burnt offering to the Lord, either to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering, you must present a male without defect from the cattle, sheep, or goats in order to that it may be accepted on your behalf. Do not bring anything with a defect because it will not be accepted on your behalf. When anyone brings from the herd or flock, 
a fellowship offering to the Lord to fulfill a special vow or as a free will offering, it may be it must be without defect or blemish to be acceptable. Do not offer to the Lord the blind, the injured, or the maimed, or anything with warts or festering or running sores. Do not place any of these on the altar as an offering made to the Lord by fire. You may, however, present as a free will offering an ox or a sheep that is deformed or stunted, but it will not be accepted in fulfillment of a vow. You must not offer to the Lord an animal whose testicles are bruised, crushed, or torn. You must not you must not do this in your own land, and you must not accept such animals from the land or excuse me, from the hand of a foreigner, and offer them as the food of your God. They will not be accepted on your behalf because they are deformed and have defects. The Lord said to Moses, When a calf, a lamb, or a goat is born, it is to remain with its mother for seven days. From the eighth day on it will be acceptable as an offering made to the Lord by fire. Do not slaughter a cow or a sheep and its young on the same day. When you sacrifice a thank offering to the Lord, sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It must be eaten that same day. Leave none of it till morning. I am the Lord. Keep my commands and follow them. I am the Lord. Do not profane my holy name. I must be acknowledged as holy by the Israelites. I am the Lord who makes you holy and who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Chapter 23 The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed feasts, the appointed feasts of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work. Wherever you live, it is a Sabbath to the Lord. These are the Lord's appointed feasts, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Lord's Passover begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread begins. For seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and do, not do, reg- and do no regular work. For seven days, present an offering made to the Lord by fire. And on the seventh day, hold a sacred assembly and do no regular work. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you and you reap its harvest, bring to the priest a sheaf of the first grain you harvest. He is to wave the sheaf before the Lord so it will be accepted on your behalf. The priest is to wave it on the day after the Sabbath. On the day you wave the sheaf, you must sacrifice as a burnt offering to the Lord a lamb, a year old without defect, together with its grain offering of Two tenths of an ephah, a fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made to the Lord by fire, a pleasing aroma, and its drink offering of a quarter of a hin of wine. You must not eat any bread or roasted or new grain until the very day you bring this offering to your God. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf of the wave of offering, count off seven full weeks. Count off fifty days up to the day after the seventh Sabbath. And then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves made of two tenths of an ephah of fine flour, baked with yeast as an wave offering of first fruits to the Lord. Present this bread with seven male present with this bread seven male lambs, each a year old and without defect, one young bull and two rams. They will be a burnt offering to the Lord, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, an offering made by fire and aroma pleasing to the Lord. Then sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering and two male and two lambs, each a year old, for a fellowship offering. The priest is to wave the two lambs before the Lord as a wave offering. Together with the bread of the first fruits, they are a sacred offering to the Lord for the priest. On that same day you are to proclaim a sacred assembly and do no regular work. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come, wherever you live. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the first day of the seventh month you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do no regular work, but present an offering made to the Lord by fire. The Lord said to Moses, The tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement. Hold a sacred assembly and and deny yourselves, and present an offering made to the Lord by fire. Do no work on that day, because it is the day of atonement, when atonement is made for you before the Lord your God. Anyone who does not deny himself on that day must be cut off from his people. I will destroy from among his people anyone who does any work on that day. You shall do no work at all. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. It is a Sabbath day of rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. From the evening of the ninth day of the month until the following evening you are to observe your Sabbath. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, of the Lord's Feast of the Tabernacle begins, and it lasts for seven days. The first day is a sacred assembly. Do no regular work. 
For seven days present offerings made to the Lord by fire, and on the eighth day hold a sacred assembly, and present an offering made to the Lord by fire. It is the closing assembly, do no regular work. These are the Lord's appointed feasts, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies, for bringing offerings made to the Lord by fire. The burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings required for each day. These offerings are in addition to those for the Lord's Sabbath, and in addition to your gifts and whatever you have vowed, and all the free will offerings you give to the Lord. So beginning with the fifteenth day of the seventh month, after you have gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the festival to the Lord for seven days. The first day is a day of rest, and the eighth day is also a day of rest. On the first day you are to take choice fruit from the trees and palm fronds, leafy branches, and poplars, and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in booths for seven days. All native-born Israelites are to live in booths, so that your descendants will know that I have had the Israelites live in booths when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses announced to the Israelites the appointed feasts of the Lord. So sometimes when we're reading the Bible, I feel like, um, and I don't know maybe if this was just the way you grew up in church or whatever, or didn't grow up in church, who knows, but... I feel like one thing I'm guilty of is I'm guilty of reading the Bible and then in the back of the mind, I feel like there's going to be like a test on it later, um, which kind of ruins it for you. And there's a lot, I mean, especially in the Old Testament, there's just so much that's just, you can't remember it all. And so the the key things of this reading are the the priests, we, we kind of read it about in the last one too a little bit, is that God, the priests have to be ceremonially clean. They can't be touching dead bodies. They got to eat the right things. They cannot be unclean. And God wants all of the people to all, to be clean as well um, through their sacrifices. And he says, I am the Lord who makes you holy. Um, and he provides that avenue for them so that they can reach it. And then we reach the six annual feasts. They serve a purpose, each and every one of them, the Sabbath and then the rest of them. Um, you know, the Passover, the first fruits, end of gathering, day of atonement, um, and, uh, and Pentecost. And I think that more important than making sure we understand all of the, for right now anyways, I should say. I mean, if you want to dive into this more, then by all means, and I kind of do on my own personal time as well, but for the purposes of this podcast, um, I think it's just important to know that um, each of these feasts serve a purpose. There's a, there's, there's a, there's ceremonies, there's, there's sacrifices, and they all go through the right processes and they all serve their own purpose the day of atonement however we'll discuss a little bit the is it's a fast actually not a feast um uh it's they are offering food their food to god that's essentially what the the and and still to this day the jewish faith um does and it's actually if i remember correctly that's rosh hashanah is what they is the celebration now or maybe that's the pentecost i can't remember um i get a little bit confused on the um, on the Jewish holidays and how they translate to today, but um, just 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 leave with the fact that they are going to follow the the annual feast that God has set before them, and that the Day of Atonement is a fast offering their food to God, and uh, that is the most solemn day of the year. Um, so it's. It's important to understand this because this is how they reach holiness, how they become clean, how they are forgiven for their sins um, by going through these processes every week and every year. So, all right, we'll move forward on to chapter 25. I misspoke. We're in chapter 24 to start. The Lord said to Moses, command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives for the light so that the lamps may be kept burning continually, continually. Outside the curtain of the testimony in the tent of meeting, Aaron is to tend the lamps before the Lord from evening till morning, continually. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. The lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord must be tended continually. Take fine flour and bake twelve loaves of bread using two tenths of an ephah for each loaf, and set them in two rows, six in each row, on the table of pure gold before the Lord. Along each row, put some pure incense as a memorial portion to represent the bread and to be an offering made to the Lord by fire. The bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath, on behalf of the Israelites as a lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons who are to eat it in a holy place because it is a most holy part of their regular share of the offerings made to the Lord by fire. 
Now the son of an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father went out among the Israelites, and a fight broke out in the camp between him and an Israelite. The son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name with a curse, so they brought, so they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shilamith, and the daughter of Dibri, the Danite. They put him in custody until the will of the Lord should be made clear to them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the blasphemer outside the camp. All those who heard him are to lay their hands on his head, and the entire assembly is to stone him. Say to the Israelites, If anyone curses his God, he will be held responsible. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death. The entire assembly must stone him, whether an alien or native-born. When he blasphemes the name, he must be put to death. If anyone takes the life of a human being, he must be put to death. Anyone who takes the life of someone's animal must make restitution, life for life. If anyone injures his neighbor, whatever he has done must be done to him, fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has injured the other, so he is to be injured. Whoever kills an animal must make restitution, but whoever kills a man must be put to death. You are to have the same law for the alien and the native-born. I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the Israelites, and they took the blasphemer outside the camp and stoned him. The Israelites did as the Lord commanded. Chapter 25 The Lord said to Moses on Mount Sinai, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years sow your fields, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But in the seventh year the land is to have a Sabbath of rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you and yourself, your manservant and maidservant, and the hired worker and temporary resident who live among you, as well as for your livestock and the wild animals in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. Count off seven Sabbaths of years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbaths of years amount to a period of forty-nine years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. Sound the trumpet throughout your land. Consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all of its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each one of you is to return to his family, property, and each to his own clan. The fiftieth year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the untended vines. For it is a jubilee and is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. In this year of jubilee, everyone is to return to its own property. If you sell land to one of your countrymen or buy any from him, do not take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your countrymen on the basis of the number of years since the jubilee. And he is to sell to you on the basis of the number of years left for harvesting crops. When the years are many, you are to increase the price, and when the years are few, you are to decrease the price, because what he is really selling you is the number of crops. Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to obey my laws, and you will live safely in the land. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and live there in safety. You may ask, what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops? I will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years. While you plant during the eighth year, you will eat from the old crop and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes in. The land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine and you are but aliens and my tenants. Throughout the country that you hold as a possession, you must provide for the redemption of the land. If one of your countrymen becomes poor and sells some of his property, his nearest relative is to come and redeem what his countrymen has sold. If, however, a man is, has no one to redeem it for him, but he himself prospers and acquires sufficient means to redeem it, he is to determine the value for the year since he sold it and refund the balance to the man to whom, the man to whom he sold it. He then can go back to his own property, but if he does not acquire the means to repay him, what he sold will remain in the possession of the buyer until the year of jubilee. It will be returned in the jubilee, and then he can go back to his property. If a man sells a house in a walled city, he retains the right of redemption a year, a full year after its sale. During that time, he may redeem it. If it is not redeemed before a full year has passed, the house in the walled city should belong permanently to the buyer and his descendants. It is not to be returned in the jubilee, but houses and villages without walls around them are to be considered as open country. They can be redeemed, and they are to be returned in the jubilee. The Levites always have the right to redeem their houses in the Levit Levitical towns which they possess. So the property of the Levites is redeemable, that is, a house sold in any town they hold and is to be returned in the Jubilee, because the houses in the towns of the Levites are their property among the Israelites. But, when, but the pasture land belonging to their towns must not be sold, it is their permanent possession. 
If one of your countrymen becomes poor and is unable to support himself among you, help him as you would an alien or a temporary resident, so he continue to live among you. Do not take interest of any kind from him, but fear your God, so that your countrymen may continue to live among you. You must not lend him money at interest or sell him food at a profit. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If one of your countrymen becomes poor among you and sells himself to you, do not make him work as a slave. He is to be treated as a hired worker or a temporary resident among you. He is to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Then his children are to be released and he will go back to his own clan and to the property of his forefathers. Because the Israelites are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt, they must not be sold as slaves. Do not rule over them ruthlessly, but fear your God. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. You may... From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents living among you and members of their clans born in your country, and they will become your property. You can will them to your children as inherited property and can make them slaves for life, but you not, must not rule over your fellow Israelites ruthlessly. If an alien or temporary resident among you becomes rich, and one of your countrymen becomes poor and sells himself to the alien living among you, or to a member of the alien's clan, he retains the right of redemption after he has sold himself. One of the relatives may redeem him. An uncle or a cousin or of any blood relative in his clan may redeem him. Or if he prospers, he may redeem himself. He and his buyer are to count from the time, count the time from the year he sold himself up to the year of Jubilee. The price for his release is to be based on the rate paid to a hired man for that number of years. If many arrears remain, he must pay for his redemption a larger share of the price paid for him. If only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, he is to compute that and pay for his redemption accordingly. He is to be treated as a man hired from year to year. You must see to it that his owner does not rule over him ruthlessly. Even if he is not redeemed in any of these ways, he and his children are to be released in the year of Jubilee. For the Israelites belong to me as servants. They are my servants, whom I brought out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So this is a pretty interesting section. God is still giving instructions on, you know, basically how to go about a lot of things. Um, and one of the reasons for the repetition, too, that I was just thinking about is you have to remember that these people are about a year out of Egypt. They have never been free before. And um, I think I made the comparison a few episodes, maybe in Exodus at one point, that, um, you know, there's stories of when American soldiers liberated uh, concentration camps in World War II and... Um, the the Jews that they let that they that they freed um, the ones that ate uh, and a, a lot of food right away they died um, so they had to kind of like they had to almost um, re imprison them I guess or or at least not let them out because they had to control how much those people um, ate and intook and integrated back into like being a normal human because they. Your, their bodies couldn't handle it. Um, so kind of thinking about it in that way, all these people have known have been has been slavery or being slaves. So it's kind of it, that when I now just saying that out now out loud, I actually kind of reached a little bit more of an understanding of how pompous and ridiculous they are at times and just don't listen to God because they've never had freedom before. They are like kids in a candy store. Um, chasing every shiny thing and everything that feels good. That now that I said that out loud, I, I have a little bit more understanding of how just ridiculous they seem to have been. But they, yeah, ha he has to teach them how to be free, and he is now providing the structure that they can operate in with their newfound freedom. We're about one year after they've left Egypt. Um, now one thing that happens that God takes very seriously is that a man, a man curses the name of God. He's half Egyptian, but he lives among the Israelites, and God tells them to stone him. Um, one thing that I think has been made pretty clear throughout many comments God has made, but I don't think I've actually touched on it, is that God considers anyone who lives with the Israelites his nation. He considers them his people, regardless of their origin, where they came from. If they're going to be near him and live with them, they are they are held to the same standards. So he, um, which I think is the same thing he does today. He doesn't care where you came from, doesn't care where you've been, doesn't care what your past is, doesn't care what your history is. He wants you to come close to him, but we still have those standards that we have to meet. Now, they're not the same standards as the Israelites had in the desert in Egypt, obviously, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we move through the Bible. But 
So one interesting thing here is he commands them to let their fields rest on the seventh year. So he farm for six years, let it rest on the seventh year. Tells them that every, you know he'll provide enough food for them if they save it for that seventh year. And then the eighth year, once they're reseeding that year again. And then he says, after doing that seven times, so 49 years, the next year, the 50th year, is the year of Jubilee. Which every year also... With Passover and Passover and Pentecost, Pentecost is the is the fifty weeks after the Passover. So, um, lots of things happen in sevens, and then lots of you know, and then on the after that hap- the seven after the system of sevens happens seven times. Um, you know, there's a there's a key key event there: Pentecost for the weeks, Jubilee for the year. Um, and one thing that it makes really clear is that in the year of Jubilee, in the Jubilee year, debts are canceled. And anyone who had to sell themselves into slavery to pay debts is now free. One thing, and I talked about this last week on the episode because somebody kind of made a comment that um, the Bible promotes and condones slavery. And I had to be careful about talking about that. The premise of that is wrong. Everything so far that we've read um, has shown us that slavery in these books of the Bible so far is not typically what we think of slavery, right? I mean, obviously, when any American thinks about slavery, we are almost always immediately taken back to the 1800s when the, uh, obviously it was a terrible, horrible thing to, that that we did. Not we, those people who were then alive. I wasn't there. But that those people did um, as a societal construct that was just awful. It seems pretty clear to me that every that most of the slavery we've seen so far. Now, obviously, the the Egyptians um, held the Israelites as slaves, and that was pretty terrible, um, and that wasn't good. But the slavery that we see with the Israelites specifically mostly has to deal with someone that uh, was in debt or either um, wanted to work towards a payment of something, and they sell themselves into service. And God has repeatedly shown. That these people are to be treated, he gives them. Uh, there's 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 rules for how to treat them. There's rules for what they get paid when their service is up. Um, and if people are living amongst the Israelites, then they will also fall into those um, same guidelines. He specifically says here that make you need to watch over these people, make sure they're not being treated ruthlessly. Um, and then on the year of Jubilee, they're free. Um, and in, uh, in Exodus, I think there was even a part where it talked about, um, if a slave reaches the end of their service and they want to stay for life, they have to come to God directly to, um, present that to him to see what he says. So in my mind, I don't see anybody doing that if they were just getting treated terribly all the time. So granted, I know slavery is like a knee jerk, cringy word to us today. And I, there's a hundred percent great reason for that, but that's not what we're talking about. In this, from what I'm gathering here, that's not what we're talking about. They are not brutally taking people, forcing them into service where they're not taken care of, treated terribly, um, looked down upon as lesser humans. That's just not what I'm seeing here, I guess. And I, like I said, it's one of those things that, yeah, you could probably, if you want to see that, then that's probably what you could see. And granted, you could, you could tell me that I'm guilty of not wanting to see that. And maybe that's true, but, um, I, verse 53, chapter 25, he is to be treated as a man hired from year to year. You must see to it that his owner does not rule over him ruthlessly. Even if he is re- not redeemed in any of these ways, he and his children are to be released in the year of Jubilee, for the Israelites belong to me as servants. They are my servants, who I brought out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So he's saying there, even if you have someone that is working for you as a slave, they serve me. I am the Lord your God. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm not, there's a lot of people that have told me the Bible promotes slavery. Not exactly. That's not what I'm seeing here. Not in the way that we're thinking about it. And that's all I'm going to leave it at that. It, 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 yeah, I just, uh, I, I've gotten pretty annoyed actually with people that have, you know, they say that to me and they, they make it seem like it's kind of a gotcha, like, Oh yeah, we're, now the whole Bible's out the window. You know, it's like no. Well, if you take one single verse out of here, you can probably make it seem like that, but you have to read the whole context. So, sorry, I got on a little bit of soapbox there. Um, the good news is we're going to read chapter twenty-six and twenty-seven, and we're going to be done with our fourth book of the Bible. 
Do not make idols or set up an image or a sacred stone for yourselves, and do not place a carved stone in your land to bow down before it. I am the Lord your God. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season, and the ground will yield its crops, and the trees of the field their fruit. Your threshing will continue until grape harvest, and the grape harvest will continue until planting, and you will eat all the food, food you want, and live in safety in your land. I will grant peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. I will remove savage beasts from the land, and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you have to remove it out to make room for the new. I will put my dwelling place among you and will not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God, and will be, you will be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt so that you would no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with heads held high. But if you will not listen to me and carry out all these commands, and if you reject my decrees and abhor my laws and fail to carry out all my commandments and so violate my covenant, then I will do this to you. I will bring upon you sudden terror, wasting disease and fever that will destroy your sight and drain away your life. I will plant seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you so that you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you, and you will flee even when no one is pursuing you. If after all this you will not listen to me, I will punish you for your sins seven times over. I will break down your stubborn pride and will make the sky above you like iron and the ground beneath you like bronze. Your strength will be spent in vain because your soil will not yield its crops, nor will the trees of the land yield their fruit. If you remain hostile toward me and refuse to listen to me, I will multiply your afflictions seven times over as your sins deserve. I will send wild animals against you, and they will rob you of your children, destroy your cattle, and make you so few in number that your roads will be deserted. If in spite of these things you do not accept my correction, but continue to be hostile towards me, I will my, my, myself will be hostile towards you and will afflict you for your sins seven times over. I will bring the sword upon you to avenge the breaking of the covenant. When you withdraw into your cities, I will send a plague among you, and you will be given into enemy hands. When I cut off your supply of bread, ten women will be able to bake your bread in one oven, and they will dole out the bread by weight. You will eat, but you will not be satisfied. If in spite of this you still do not listen to me, but continue to be hostile towards me, then in my anger I will be hostile towards you. And I myself will punish you for your sins seven times over. You will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places, cut down your incense altars, and pile your dead bodies on the lifeless forms of your idols. And I will abhor you. I will turn your cities into ruins and lay waste your sanctuaries. And I will take no delight in the pleasing aroma of your offerings. I will lay waste the lands so that your enemies who live there will be appalled. I will scatter you among the nations and will draw out my sword and pursue you. Your land will be laid waste and your cities will lie in ruins. Then the land will enjoy its Sabbath years all the time that it lies desolate and you are in the country of your enemies. Then the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbaths. All the time that it lies desolate, the land will have the rest it did not have during the Sabbaths you lived in it. As for those of you who are left, I will make their hearts so fearful in the lands of their enemies that the sound of the wind-blown leaf will put them into flight. They will run as though fleeing from the sword and they will fall even though no one is pursuing them. They will stumble over one another as though fleeing from the sword, even though no one is pursuing them. So you will not be able to stand before your enemies. You will perish among the nations. The land of your enemies will devour you. Those of you who are left will, lay, will waste away in the lands of their enemies because of their sins. Also because of their father's sins, they will waste away. But if they will confess their sins and the sins of their fathers, their treachery against me and their hostility toward me, which made me hostile towards them, so that I sent them into the land of their enemies, when they are, then, when they are, then when their uncircumcised hearts are humbled, they pay for their sin. I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and my covenant with Isaac, and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. For the land will be deserted by them, and will enjoy its Sabbath while it lies desolate without them. They will pay for their sins because they rejected my laws and abhorred my decrees. Yet in spite of this, when they are in the land of the enemies, I will not reject them or abhor them so as to destroy them completely. Breaking my covenant with them, I am the Lord their God. But for their sake I will remember the covenant with their ancestors whom I brought out of Egypt in the sight of the nations to be their God. I am the Lord. These are the decrees, the laws, and the regulations that the Lord established on Mount Sinai between himself and the Israelites through Moses. Chapter 27 
The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, If anyone makes a special vow to dedicate persons to the Lord by giving equivalent values, set the value of a male between the ages of 20 and 60 at 50 shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. And if it is female, set her value at 30 shekels. If it is a person between the ages of 5 and 20, set the value... Excuse me, the value of a male at 20 shekels and of a female at 10 shekels. If it is a person want between one month and five years, set the value of a male at five shekels of silver and that of a female at three shekels of silver. If it is a person 60 years old or more, set the value of a male at 15 shekels and that of a female at 10 shekels. If anyone making the vow is too poor to pay the specified amount, he is to present the person to the priest, who will set the value for him according to what the man making the vow can afford. If what he vowed is an animal that is acceptable as an offering to the Lord, such an animal given to the Lord becomes holy. He must not exchange it for a sub- or substitute it a good one for a bad one, or a bad one for a good one. If he should substitute one animal for another, both it and the substitute become holy. If what he vowed is a ceremonially unclean animal, one that is not acceptable as an offering to the Lord, the animal must be presented to the priest, who will judge its quality as good or bad. Whatever value the priest then sets, that is what it will be. If the owner wishes to redeem the animal, he must add a fifth to its value. If a man dedicates his house as something holy to the Lord, the priest will judge its quality as good or bad. Whatever value the priest then sets, so it will remain. If the man who dedicates his house redeems it, he must add a fifth to its value, and the, lo- and the house will again become his. If a man dedicates to the Lord part of his family land, its value is to be set according to the amount of seed required to it, 50 shekels of silver, to a homer of barley seed. If he dedicates his field during the year of Jubilee, the value that has been set remains. But if he dedicates his field after the Jubilee, the priest will determine the value according to the number of years that remain until the next year of Jubilee. And then set its value and it and set value will be do excuse me, and its set value will be reduced. If the man who dedicates the field wishes to redeem it, he must add a fifth to its value, and the field will again become his. If, however, he does not redeem the field, or if he has sold it to someone else, it can never be redeemed. When the field is released in the Jubilee, it will become holy, like a field devoted to the Lord. It will become the property of the priests. If a man dedicates to the Lord a field he has bought, which, it is, which is not part of his family land, the priest will determine its value up to the year of Jubilee, and the man must pay its value on that day as something holy to the Lord. In the year of Jubilee, the field will rev- revert to the person from whom he bought it, the one whose land it was. Every shekel is to be set according to the sanctuary shekel, twenty garaz to the shekel. No one, however, may dedicate the firstborn of an animal, since the firstborn already belongs to the Lord. Whether an ox or a sheep, it is the Lord's. If it is one of the unclean animals, he may buy it back at its set value, adding a fifth of the value to it. If he does not redeem it, it is to be sold at its set value. But nothing that a man owns and devotes to the Lord, whether a man, an animal, or family land, may be sold or redeemed. Everything so devoted is, as it's, everything so devoted is most holy to the Lord. No person devoted to the destruction may be ransomed. Excuse me. No person devoted to destruction may be ransomed. He must be put to death. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. If a man redeems any of his tithe, he must add a fifth of the value to it. The entire tithe of the herd and flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod, will be holy to the Lord. He must not pick out the good from the bad or make any substitution. If he does make a substitution, both the animal and its substitute become holy and cannot be redeemed. These are the commands the Lord gave Moses on Mount Sinai for the Israelites. So in these last couple chapters, um, we wrap up. The, it it kind of even is easy to forget sometimes during this book that this entire book has pretty much been a conversation between God and Moses on Mount Sinai. And Moses has been up there for a very long time. This is the second time he's been up there. And the first part of this sets out the consequences for his, if these covenants with the God and the Israelites are kept or broken. And you do not they don't want to break them. Uh, based on this covenant being broken, God says that um, there's going to be famine. Enemies will come after them. Wild animals will come after them. They won't be able to farm. Um, it'll get so bad that they'll resort to cannibalism. They'll be terrified. They will run away even then no one is chasing them. I mean, that, that long list we just read, it just, that is, that just sounds awful. So they don't want to break the covenants. But he also um, sets out or makes it clear that even if they are broken, here's how you come back. Which back in that day, like covenants were covenants. They were either broken or they kept or they were broken and ended. So this is, it's, 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 
uh, notable that God is still, even if they just completely go off course, he still gives them a way back to him, which is, you know, that's, that's, it's just something that was unheard of at this time. Now, also at the very end of the chat, at the end, very end of the book, it talks about, um, uh, when they are going to give, um, I'm going to uh, brain fart in the word here. Let me see here. I'm just going to make sure, um, vows when, when you are, um, if you're if you're gonna give a vow of something to the Lord, um, it goes through how they do that and how they redeem it and give everything back to God. Basically, um, dedicating your house, dedicating people, dedicating animals to the Lord, anything that they have, land. Um, it just is basically telling them how to do it and 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 how the priest would value those things and giving them to the Lord. Also, this chapter is the first time that the Bible mentions tithing. Which a, a tithe uh, is is li- literally the word for ten uh, percent. Um, so again, this was a tough get book to get through. Um, even for me, there was parts of it that just felt like I was saying the same thing over again, and reading it out loud is actually pretty difficult. So, um, but hey, we have finished our fourth book of the Bible. If you're if you're still listening, that is, I mean, I don't. I don't think a lot of I think a lot of people start reading the Bible, and especially if they start from the beginning, um, I think we're probably past the point where they lose their gusto, <laughs> um, which is easy to do. So keep it up. I'm I'm glad you're here. And the Book of Numbers is next. There's 36 chapters. We'll probably take one week for uh, for 12. So we'll probably take three weeks to read um, eat the entire book. We will throw a little bit of Psalms in there. Um, so if you've been thinking ahead to yourself and thinking, oh, Lord, here comes this. When we, when we get to Psalms and everything, it's like, calm down. Um, those weren't all written in one fell swoop. So those will be sprinkled out through a lot of our reading. So we'll we'll have our first Psalms here in the next, next month or so. But there's our fourth, fourth book of the Bible. I hope you're learning. I hope you're you're liking it. Comment on the on the video. If you're listening on something other than YouTube, come to the Blue Creek Outdoors YouTube channel and comment on this episode on the video that that's probably the easiest way to um, provide something there. If you want to make a point or think I missed something, think I got something wrong by all means, please do so. Um, It'll, it'll just, you know, it's just being challenged on anything that we think or interpret is a good thing. So thank you again for listening. I will, we'll be back next week and we will start the book of numbers. (laughs) 